Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Robin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Pixel Edge ROM based on Android 15 onto a Nothing Phone 2. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, get hold of the latest Android SDK platform tools from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In our case, we have done the extraction in C drive and as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Moving on, once you have done the extraction, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. Debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the booter on your phone. So let's now enable both the toggles. For that, go to the settings menu on your phone. Then go to about phone, nothing OS and tap on build number 7 times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Once that happens, go back, again go back, go to system and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone, tap on OK. You might get one more prompt. In that prompt, tap on Allow. And with this, debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So either go to the address bar of Platform Tools, type in CMD and hit Enter. This will launch the command from the Platform Tools directory. Or you may open the CMD from the Start menu, type in CD space, paste the path of Platform Tools and hit Enter. In either of the two cases, you should be inside the Platform Tools directory. Once you have done that, now type in ADB Devices and verify that you are getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone. And use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB fixes and verify that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the booter on your phone. Do note that unlocking will wipe off all the data. And it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done in short. Just boot your phone to fastboot mode and use the fastboot flashing unlock command. You will get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. With this, the bootloader will be unlocked. Your phone will undergo a wipe and then boot to the OS. Once it's in the OS, make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again. Once that is done, let's move ahead. Now you may get hold of the latest Pixel Edge ROM from this link. And apart from that, you should also download the super empty IMG file. Because we have to wipe the super partition, if you don't wipe the super partition and flash the ROM, you will get the error applying update 7 error code k install device open error. So to avoid this error from happening, it's highly recommended or rather it's compulsory to wipe the super partition via the super empty IMG file. So get hold of both the file, this super empty file and the ROM zip file. Once you have got both the files, you will have to transfer them inside the platform tools directory as well. So this is the ROM zip file, let me transfer it here. Likewise, let's also transfer the super empty IMG file, which is here. So let's do that. And with this, we have got both the ROM zip and the super empty file. For the ease of convenience, it's highly recommended to rename the file to something shorter. So let's rename it to ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. Once that is done, let's now move ahead. So now you have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. For that, type in ADB, reboot, bootloader and hit enter. And your phone should not reboot into fastboot mode in a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. Once it's in the fastboot mode, type in fastboot devices and verify that you are getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install fastboot drivers on your PC. We have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and install the drivers. Once you have installed the drivers, right click on the window icon and choose device manager, then expand the Android phone section and verify that your phone is being shown here as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead. So now your first course of action is to wipe the super partition on your phone. So copy this command and paste it in the CMD window and the super partition is now wiped. Once that is done, you could now flash the for recovery onto our phone. So although I made a separate video on the same, but still I'll show you once again how to get this job done. So first and foremost, we are done with the first step. Likewise, the second step is also done. And the third step has also been checkmarked off the list. So now get hold of the recovery file from this official link and make sure to download the stable build and not the beta build. As of now, this is the latest version. Download it and once you have got the recovery file, it will be in a zip format. So extract the recovery zip file and upon extraction, you will get the following files. Just copy the recovery IMT file from here and transfer the file inside the platform tools directory. Once that is done, we could now flash the file in the recovery partition. Type in fastboot flash partition name which is recovery and file name which is recovery.img and hit enter. 
and the or orange fox recovery will not be flashed in the recovery partition. Once that is done, you may either type in fast boot, reboot recovery, or use the volume key to highlight unlock recovery mode and press the power key to confirm. And in either of the two cases, your phone will not reboot to the orange fox recovery. You may also simply copy paste the command from my guide. I have given the command here. As you could see, this is the command to flash the recovery, and the command to re reboot the recovery is this one. With that said, your phone should now reboot to the recovery in a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. And with this, we are now inside the Orange Fox recovery. And your first course of action is to now do a format data, which will wipe off all the data from your phone. So if that's well and good, then make sure to take a backup beforehand. And then let's access the wipe section of the recovery. And from the wipe section, go to format data, type in yes, and hit the orange check mark. And the format data is now complete. Once that is done, you will now have to go back, go to menu, select reboot and reboot to recovery. Your phone will now reboot to recovery and this will remount the data partition on your phone. Once that is done, you may then transfer the ROM zip file onto your phone as well and flash it accordingly. So in most cases, I have seen that even after doing a format data, the PC is not able to read the phone. In other words, at the very max, your PC might show the phone, but it might not be able to access the storage. So let's see what is the case with me and then I will proceed accordingly. So give it a few more seconds. As you could see, my phone is shown here. But if I try to access my phone, the storage, I cannot access the storage. It's all blank. So this using a simple copy paste or in other words, the USB mount method will not work here. So I have to take any other approach for this. As of now, I'm using the ADB push command to get the job done. So for that, the command is ADB push file name, which is rom.zip space forward slash SD card and hit enter. And the ROM zip file will now be transferred onto my phone. As of now, I'm transferring it inside the internal storage, which is the SD card. You may also transfer to any other directory of your choice, for example, data or temp, but it's highly recommended to keep it SD card. Moreover, apart from that, you may also use a USB OTG device if you have, but please do not use the ADB side load because that will end up flashing the file as well. We do not want to flash the file by ADB side load. Flashing by ADB side load is only done with AOSP recovery like Lineage OS, CR, Droid, Evolution X and such on. But in case of Orange Fox and WRP recovery, you should always use the install option to get the job done and not the side load method. Either transfer the file via USB mount, but if your phone is not shown on your PC or if you cannot access the storage, then you may use the ADB push command, transfer the file inside the platform tools directory, and then use the this command syntax and the file will be transferred onto your phone. Do note that in most cases, the same day window will not, not show the progress of the file being transferred that is completely normal just give it a few more minutes and the file will be transferred and as you could see the file has not been transferred onto our phone let me verify the same as well and this is the rom zip file so let's not flash it choose the rom file and swipe to flash the flashing is now started as you could see and it will take up to around four to five minutes for the flashing to complete so let's just wait for that to happen so guys the rom flashing is now complete although you might get a few warning sign that is completely normal. Just make sure that you are getting the success method at the top. As you could see, it's not successful. Now, if you want to flash any other zip files, such as the Magisk or any file of your choice, then please do a reboot to recovery and only then flash the file. Finally, your last course of action is to do a format data. So go to wipe format data and type in yes. So we have to do a format data before and after flashing the ROM zip file. And once that is done, the data wipe is now complete. Let's move ahead with the final most important step. So as you might be aware, the ROM file has been flashed to the inactive slot as you could see, which in my case is the slot B. So currently I am in active slot, slot A, but the ROM is in the slot B. So I'll now have to make a switch to slot B so that my phone would go to the OS. So for that, I let's go back, go to the menu, reboot, and you could see the slot A is active, but the ROM has flashed to the slot B. So I have to make a switch to the slot B. If in your case, the slot B is active, then the ROM will be flashed in slot A and you have to make a switch to slot A. So make the choice accordingly. It's just that you have to make a switch to the inactive slot, which in my case is slot B. So I will tap on switch to slot B and the changing boot slot is now complete. Finally, tap on reboot system and you will now get a warning that no OS is installed. This is a false error message and nothing to worry about. So just swipe to reboot and your phone will now reboot to the OS. Do keep in mind that the first boot will take up some time. That is completely normal and nothing to worry about. From the subsequent time, that will not be the case. Moreover, let's just wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear, either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully. 
it might take up to around 8 to 10 seconds for the boot logo to appear and after that we will have a look at the rom features as well so let's give it a few more seconds and as you could see this is the boot animation taken from the latest pixel 9 series and we should now be inside the rom screen as well so let's now set up the rom file give it a few more seconds so let's get started with the rom setup process as of now i'm skipping the initial setup process if you want you may connect your phone to the wi-fi link your google account and restore all the data but for now i'm skipping all the stuffs just to sp speed up the process and with this we should now be inside the rom as you could see it's the latest pixel edge rom based on android 15 and this is the app drawer with a few google apps being installed and third party apps such as dolby atmos which is audio enhancer app and this is the qs style settings menu so we have the new android 15 style settings menu then apart from that the power menu is also there in qs styles then the predictive back gesture let me have a look that is also there you could get a sneak peek of what is behind the menu as you could see then let's have a look at the volume panel so it does have a new volume panel as well you could add new device from here or change the audio settings from this page as well it will give you all the access from here apart from that any other feature okay yes one more is the private space let's have a look at that as well so go to the security and privacy then first set a screen lock i am using a pattern you may choose any one of your choice so for the ease of convenience i'm using a pattern and now let me show you the private space so let me confirm my password and you could now use the same password as you lock screen or choose a new pattern as of now I'm using a new new lock screen for the private space so confirm your existing one and now choose and you could choose a fingerprint pin password pattern anything of your choice for the ease of convenience i'm using a pattern three cross three and this is my new pattern for the private space and if you want you may also add your fingerprint i will do that later on not now and the private space should now be made in a few seconds so let me show you that as well and it's not done and dusted you may access the private space from the app drawer go there tap on the lock icon and input your password and you could access all the apps from here then you could also add new apps in the private space likewise if you go to the settings menu of private space you even have the option to hide the private space and the private space is now gone even from the app drawer let me show you just lock it once and it's not gone even from the app drawer you, if you want to access it then you ha have to make a search from here search private space and then you may open it from this page only so it's quite a handy feature then let minimize it and then you could access it from here it's now enabled again tap on lock and it will be gone from here so these are some of the android 15 specific features apart from that let's have a look at some of the aosp features so if you go to wallpaper and style so you may change the color from here of the themes as you could see it's based on the material ui theming engine whatever color is the major color in, in the wallpaper it will theme the entire ui and ux accordingly you may also go to other colors and choose colors from here as well this is the let's say yellow color and so on then you may also enable the white light theme from here or go back to the dark theme and apart from that you may also change wallpaper from here as of not only has one single wallpaper you may add new wallpaper from online or any source of your choice then these are the various lock screen clock style that you could choose from let me choose this one as it does not overlap with the logo then if you go to the home screen you have the option to enable theme icons and as you could see they are now enabled and you may change the app grid to 5 cross 5 as well this is the maximum in this rom and let's go with the default theming style for now apart from that you may access the system menu and the glyph interface is the same that you get in nothing os there are a few miscellaneous tweaks so high developer status and you may even spoof your phone for the google play integrity so using this you will pass the basic and the device test but the strong test will fail for most banking app these are the only two tests required but if you want to pass the strong test as well then i have made a separate guide on that as well and you could ask for the keybox xml file i will share the file with you in the comment section and then you could use my guide to pass the strong test as well simply drop in the comments and then you will pass all the three tests as you could see in my video as well then you may also hide the developer status from various banking and payment app simply show system apps and you may hide the status from any app of your choice and apart from miscellaneous these are all the tweaks device extra wireless power shift so you may enable wireless reverse wireless charging as well the usb otg if you have an otg device and that's just about it as you might be aware this form is all about the clean stock pixel experience with just the bare bone features you will not get too many customizations because that is 
this ROM is not known for that. With that said, a couple of other features are there in the home settings. You may enable notification dots. If this will then add the icons and notifications or rather the numbers next to each app icon. Then apart from that, these are the basic tweaks for with regard to the search settings and all such things which aren't any UI tweaks as such. So these are just the basic home screen tweaks. So this is just a bare bone UI stock clean Android experience similar to the Pixel experience ROM which is now no more there. So and it's bloatware free quite fast to use without any lags as such. So guys on that note we round up this video. If you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.